Well, welcome everybody, my name is Manuel Frias. I am working at the Helcom Secretariat and I am personally very happy to moderate this session about data and MSP because I have been working all my life with data. I consider myself as a GIS data guy and it all started when I went to study GIS in Holland and there I fell in love with GIS but I happened to fall in love also with a Finnish girl and that's why <laughs> I'm living in Finland and not in Spain, my home country. But uh, yes, I have been working with the Plan Botnia project. Have you heard about the Plan Botnia project? How many of you have heard of the Plan Botnia? Very little. But okay, but anyway, you can you can see our homepage still. Um, well, first I have good news and bad news for you. The good news is that we have six very interesting presentations by six excellent professionals. And the bad news is that we have so little time. I was given this, so if you exceed the time, I have to show you the red card, sorry. It wasn't my idea. <laughs> okay, but first, I would like to introduce this session. I found this on the internet and I thought that if you have been working or are working with data, you would feel that you have been in this situation. How long does it take to collect data? How long does it take to analyze this data? How many hours how do we spend writing reports about data to then spend 15 minutes like you in a presentation, in a project that you have been working for years? But data, there is a huge interest about data, MSP, but why? But I think that the, the answer is obvious. We need data for making MSP, or as Sherlock Holmes would say, this from one of, of his books, data, 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 he cried impatiently. I can't make bricks without clay. If he were here, he would probably say, I can't make MSP without data. So this is obvious. And also in the Helcom community, there is a huge interest about MSP and data. And that's why there was a project called Horizon in which we made this survey about Helcom data. We wanted to know what users thought about Helcom data and I don't have time to go through this token, but we can, you can pass it around to have a look. And this will be published in our website soon. And also as part of this project, we have made a dedicated MSP map service in which you can see all the MSP related data now in one separated map service. Now there is everything in one place, but soon there will be only one for MSP. This is a way to improve the accessibility of this MSP data. Okay, but this is our small contribution to MSP data, to this MSP data world. But there are challenges, there are many challenges. I'm going to, I'm going to mention only three. And the first one is harmonization. How to harmonize data, how to make data comparable at a regional level, when sometimes it's not even comparable at national level. This is a challenge. Sharing cooperation, what to share, how to share, with whom. This goes with tra transparency also. Cooperation, how to cooperate, with whom. And tools, do we need tools? What kind of tools? How do we use these tools? Well, I think, I guess, I know that we're gonna get some answers here in this session. And we're gonna start right away with Bettina Capeller, who is working for the German Federal Maritime and Hydrographic Agency, BSH for friends. And she will talk about the participate stakeholder workshop on MSP data and uh, a potential network. Welcome, Bettina. Yeah. I'm gonna put it here. Good morning. Um, I just want to make it a very short uh, introduction into this uh, session. Um, and uh, 
you have uh, seen in, in our program, work program of participate that we had a series of stakeholder workshops and one of them was the uh, workshop on, on MSP data and the MSP data networks. We have collected, um, <laughs> uh, set up these, these overall conclusions and key findings which we also find in, in uh, this paper. Um, about the uh, multi-stakeholder uh, dialogue, and I don't want to get into uh, very deep into this list, but um, one main point was um, the need to set up a pan-Baltic spatial data infrastructure, and uh, preferably with a decentralized data holding, and uh, and of course to to uh, speak and talk and to uh, agree on certain. Uh, standards, common priorities, um, how to fill gaps and how to create strong metadata to uh, create this transparency Manuel has just spoken about. So um, the next step we agreed on was uh, to develop a proposal for a subgroup on MSP data and the Baltic MSP data network under the Helcom Vasab MSP working group. Um, and, and this would be in the sense uh, of these expert groups, MSP expert groups, that uh, uh, Angela talked about yesterday uh, in the framework of uh, the, the uh, suggestions for a full future multi-level MSP governance framework for the Baltic Sea region. And we presented this uh, um, proposal to the ninth meeting of the Halcom Vassab MSP working group, which uh, took place on Monday, 16th of June. And uh, we are happy to, uh, to say that the, the working group welcomed this proposal and decided to suggest to the Halcom heads of delegation and the WASAP CSPD from the BSA uh, Baltic Sea region the adoption of the establishment of such data group. Um, and the procedure would be that first we will um, try to get the approval. And then uh, the HACOM and WASAP secretaries prepare some uh, more input, a first a set of more um, um, elaborated terms of reference and think about uh, who could be the members and, um, and then uh, organize an initial group meeting. And HACOM already um, volunteered to host this first meeting in Helsinki uh, in October 2014. And the task of such a group would be the refinement, of course, of the terms of reference, assignment of roles, and, and setting up a time schedule, and thinking about the results uh, they want to achieve within this time, time frame they are setting. Um, the preparation of annual reports to the working group uh, to see how uh, uh, um, work tasks um, advancing, then uh, identification of MSP evidence and information on data needs, on the data projects, priorities, to see which kind of data is available, what, uh, what is lacking, and how could we fill these uh, gaps, and maybe uh, propose some research priorities to the research community. And of course, uh, Manuel uh, said this, we have to uh, try to achieve some uh, harmonization of data and information, have to agree on, on content attributes, formats, language issues, and so on, and uh, also on the criteria for the data quality. Um, and the, the, yeah, the big uh, target, the, the goal would be, the objective would be to have in the end, uh, this regional spatial data infrastructure for, for MSP. And uh, I would like to, um, to say that the, uh, we have a, a certain uh, a similar project uh, with, um, for marine data uh, in, in general in Germany. And uh, there's a big project to, to develop such um, a marine data spatial infrastructure for Germany. And it's a, it's a big, huge effort to do this and to, to link all these institutions with their data, their respective data, and to make the data available through cer a certain data portal, through certain data services. So this would be uh, our um, vision of how this could work for the Baltic Sea region. And I hope with this expert group we will come a bit closer to this, uh, to this big objective. Thank you. I didn't have to show anything in time.
And now the next one is Jans Peter Weiss Hartmann, who is working for the Danish Geodata Agency. Welcome, Jans Peter. And okay, you have many titles here, but you are chairman of the one group of the International Hydrographic Organization, or many groups actually. Can you just help me to find the presentation? I'm not sure I, um, I'll be able to manage in 20 minutes, so maybe you should just be ready with the yellow and the red card. Yeah. I'll give you a presentation about marine spatial data infrastructure, and it's a little bit different approach, and it is focusing on data, and the data needed not only for MSP, but for a lot of things. Already have, to, yeah. I'll give you just a, about the traditional approach to hydrographic data and data set. What about the expectation in the marine or maritime field? Something about MSDI, the data from the hydrography approach, and then something about the MSDI from, from a national approach. Just a small thing about the Danish Geodata Agency. We are responsible for surveying at land and, and at sea and also about the, the charts at, at land and sea, not only for Denmark, but for, for the Faroe Islands and, and for the area around Greenland, but we're also responsible for cadastra and for the geodata infrastructure. And when we talk about uh, marine spatial planning and, and integrated coastal zone management, that is the, uh, another agency in Denmark. I think this is also an important uh, picture about our areas of responsibility because fo focusing not only on the Baltic area don't make sense for us. So if we want to make a MSP in, in, in the Baltic, we also have to coordinate what we're doing in the North Sea and what we're doing in the Arctic. And, and establishing an MSDI is from our approach, not only for the Baltic, but that will be also for, for the Arctic and, and, and for the North Sea as well. If you look at, at the traditional approach from at hydrographic office approach, our primary user is the mariner. Uh, we are focusing on, on products, uh, about paper charts, uh, electronic data. Most of the regulation is, is done by IMO and, and is clearly stated in, in, in SOLAS and, and the international regulations. And the International Hydrographic Office is, is focusing on standardization, harmonization, and making recommendations. And for us, it's, it's the, until now, the, the primary focus is the, the, the uh, safety at sea. A lot of things have changed that, and, and that's the reason why we are now focusing on, on marine uh, data infrastructure. And what we are seeing in, in, in a lot of areas is there's a lot of new activities going on. There's a lot of new users, a lot of stakeholders, and they have the de demand for the, for the same area. So if you have established a windmill farm in, in the Danish area, you can't use that again. So there's a lot of new uh, initiatives coming from European Union and, and marine spatial planning also one of them. Uh, in Denmark at least there's a lot of uh, politicians like to have a greater user involvement. Uh, the citizens should be able to track their case and, and, and transparency. And, and if we look at about the agencies, there's a cre increased demand for coordination and planning in, in the marine area. Uh, we have to coordinate what we are doing at land and, and at sea, and of course to coordinate with our neighboring countries. From so our approach is not doing anything will not be an option any longer. And, and so using the marine spatial data infrastructure is one of the tools that could help us in doing so. We changed the name in Denmark not to saying just marine spatial data infrastructure because not a lot of people understand what that is. So we changed it to the geodata of the sea. It sounds a little bit better and, and, and people like that. I could give you a presentation about what is uh, spatial data infrastructure. I think this is would be rather boring, so I've take, taken a little bit different approach to this. First, a lot of people say, why don't we just use the Inspire Directive? Uh, they'll help us with, with, with everything what we are doing. But if you look carefully at the Inspire Directive, it's only about how to distribute data. But when you talk about marine spatial data infrastructure, we start to how we collect data, how we store data, and how we, we use the data. So, so talking about marine spatial data infrastructure and data is it's a total value chain we have to focus on, and I'll show you a little bit about that later. 
the uh, way we approach the, the marine spatial data infrastructure is divided in, in three, the, the data, that means the metadata and the, the data, set, uh, data sets. We talk about the functionality, how we, we, we uh, make data available through web map service and, and other technology uh, that are used for that. And then we have the governance, and, and this triangle should show the, the kind of complication. And if we had to draw the, this figure five years ago, we have turned it around and said that the data is, is the biggest challenge. But I don't think that data and functionality is, is a challenge anymore. We already have uh, data, we already have the functionality, uh, but the biggest uh, challenge on a national, regional, and international approach is, is the governance. How to make the right agreements, how to make the organization, and, and, and the financial model to that uh, will make the data available for, for the users. What we're doing in, 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 in the MSDI working group, it is divided a little bit different. We're focusing on, on the stakeholders, what are the benefits, how do we fund the uh, MSDI, look about the technical standard. There's a lot of standards already in place, and I don't want to go more in detail uh, about that. And then, of course, the, the information systems that are, are used to, to provide the, the users with the data. <coughs> and then there's the data, and, and a lot of people are focusing on the products, but this is not a focusing on products, it's more about data and data sets. And that also gives some complication as well. And then what we have realized is also the part that about education. We have to make sure that, that the people that are going to use these um, marine spatial data infrastructure systems have to be well educated, understand the challenge and the possibilities uh, uh, with this. Just a, a short through that, that when we talk about MSDI, it's not only for marine spatial planning, it, it's all about what is on the sea, in the sea, and under the sea. So we should be able to use a marine spatial data infrastructure for, for many purposes, and of course also for the marine spatial planning. Under the International Hydrographic Organization, ITO, we have established the marine spatial data infrastructure, and this is a, a, a organization that, that is uh, covering all uh, hydrographic offices in the world. So we have a more strategic and a political approach focusing on, on uh, how we could um, provide information to national spatial data infrastructures, uh, working with uh, appropriate technical bodies. We're working with standards and we have made this publication uh, the marine dimension where you can have a guidance for, for, for how to establish a MSDI. And if you want to know more about this working group, you can go to this uh, web page and have all the information. We will provide you with best practices, standards, and, and how to use uh, uh, the, the, the things that have been already established in different countries. So from an overall approach, we need to have standards. We ha need to harmonize what we're doing. And of course, if you take it from a national approach, that could help the, 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 the national agencies in establishing their own MSDI. But this is just to show you the, 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 the data that we have uh, established in Denmark. And, but it's clearly that is not enough. We need to have data from our neighboring countries. And for that reason, uh, we have to have a, a regional approach to make sure that, that the, the, the national MSDI are harmonized with their neighboring countries so we can, can uh, exchange data uh, with our neighboring countries. And as I said previously, for instance, in Denmark, it don't make sense only to have a MSDI in the Baltic. We also have to establish a MSDI in, in, in the North Sea, and we are at the moment establishing an Arctic SDI. And we want to make sure that, that uh, what we're doing in, in one area are coordinated in, in, in another area. And I think what people in, in Canada and, and, and the Russia would like to, to have the same because they have to exchange data in, in, in their neighboring areas. So it's a kind of a big puzzle that we have to make sure that all the co uh, components are, are coordinated so we don't have to produce and do the things many times, but we can use the, the, the technical and the data uh, for many purposes. Just to show what we are doing in, 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 in the, the on a regional approach, the, the Baltic Sea Hydrographic Commission have established a, a marine spatial data infrastructure working group dealing with MSDI from a hydrographic approach. And this is our work plan that we will focusing on, on uh, the legal aspects because what we realize exchanging data in, in the Baltic, even though we think the Baltic countries are very uniform, 
there's a huge different approach to, to data and, and how to exchange data, so we will investigate that. We will also, uh, for that reason, try to liaise with, with other products, so we make sure that, that what is going on in the Baltic is, is not duplicated, but, but we harmonize what we are doing. So if other bodies are doing the same, we don't need to, to, to do it. Uh, then we have the, the, the new standards from this called S100 standard, and we think that standard could be used for, for, for exchange of data. I, uh, it's uh, also building on, on S100, uh, but also about ISO standard. So that could be one of the standards used for exchanging uh, data uh, across borders. Of course, investigate the, the Inspire. What is the, the, the implication of Inspire? How could we use uh, the Inspire directive to, to exchange data and the component from that? And of course, having focus about MSP and integrated coastal zone managed, how should we, as a hydrographic office, be able to provide the, the necessary data for, for, for that? And then just have a common understanding about what is the MSDI, how do we establish that? and then have uh, tried to, to have a technical solution in the Baltic from a hydrographic office point of view, exchanging our data, making sure that the hydrographic data is available for, for the agencies uh, in, in, in the Baltic. Then there's uh, the <coughs> directive that hopefully will be uh, approved later this summer. And if you look at the, at the data side, I think in Article 6 is clearly stated that we have to organize the use of best available data. And, and, and from my approach, that is to establish the MSDI and, and make sure these data is available. So it's not only shape files or, or uh, raster charts that we have to deliver, it is data set. But we also have to, to ensure that we are able to, to exchange data between the member states. And, and, and I think that starts to complicate a little bit. We have to have a uniform approach in every country that entitles us to exchange the data and also be able to exchange with third countries outside the European Union. And that also, um, from my approach, say that we have to have a more international approach to standardization and how we do it. Otherwise, we won't be able to fulfill this directive. This is a lot of text, but, but uh, in, in Article 8, there's clearly stated 11 bullet points with the areas that we have to be able to make our plans. <coughs> and the big question, and I'll come back to that a little bit later, what is the data set that we need for maritime spatial planning? It's not only for planning, uh, because the, here there's clearly stated 11 areas, but we also knew, need data set to give us an overview about, for instance, where do we have the wrecks? where do the, the military have their exercise areas. Not that we want to plan with RECs, or that we want to plan with the exercise areas, but we have to know where these areas are, otherwise we can't make our uh, plans. So for instance, in Denmark, we have uh, identified 70 different data sets that we need to, to fulfill this directive. I'll come back to that a little bit later. So seeing MSDI from a Danish perspective, we have to be able to, to, to exchange the data uh, with our neighboring countries, and we have to make sure that we have the data available for, for overview, for charting, and, and, and at for, for planning for MS, MSP. I think this clearly shows that, that we need to coordinate with Sweden, Poland, uh, and Germany, and, and Norway for, to, to make our plans. In, in, in the, uh, what we're doing at the moment is to try to, to, to make a, a MSDI in Denmark. And I think what is important is to, to find out who have the responsibility for what when you want to exchange data. It's not just saying that one agency has to, to, to make sure that, that they exchange the data. You have to have a coordinated and harmonized approach. So we have divided uh, our MSDI in a basic MSDI. What are the responsibility for the, for the MSDI? What are the responsibility for the agencies? And what will be the output from, from a MSDI? And, the, and, and all the agencies in Denmark, and we have about 10 agencies that are uh, responsible for data for, in accordance with the marine spatial planning, and they have to provide metadata, they have to provide the services for, for, for the basic uh, MSDI. And, th and the basic MSDI will, will make sure that we have a governance in place. They will ensure that the metadata uh, have the right quality level. It, it's up and running. And it, it will make sure that we have the services that we have decided should be in place and they are up and running. 
but not the same that we need to have all the services. We just ha need to have the services that the users uh, want. And for instance, the view service, it's not necessary that we need to have a view service uh, in, in a basic MSDI. It's only if, if the agencies would like us to have that. Of course, if you have the citizens to be able to, to look at the data, you could uh, establish a view service. This is the, 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 the data sets, and what we've been doing in Denmark is, is uh, focusing on MSP and then made interviews of, of about 10 uh, different agencies in, in, uh, in Denmark that will be involved in, in MSP and, and try to find out what are the data set that we need to entitle us to uh, make uh, marine spatial plans. We have about 70 data sets. When we have established the data sets or, or, or the information about the data sets, we have investigated if, if these data sets are uh, covered by the INSPIRE uh, directive, and, and almost all data sets are covered by the INSPIRE directive. So the agencies have to make these data uh, available through the INSPIRE directive, and, and what we will um, do in, in Denmark is make sure that the MSDI also makes sure that the, the, the data will fulfill the INSPIRE directive, so you don't have to to, to, to provide data for the Inspire Directive and to provide data for, for, for MSP. You will just provide the data once and then the MSDI will make sure that, that this is in place. Then it's about the hydrographic data sets in, in role in, in MSDI and this is just the raster charts and when we start to talk about what data we should have in for, for MSP, the agencies just told us we just need a raster chart, then it's fine with us. Then people start to say, now we would like to have your digital data and, and data set for, for that's used for, for, for navigation. Uh, and, and then it starts to be a little bit complicated because if you just take the data that is provided for the ICTI system for the navigator and say, this is what we want to do, and you d don't know what you're doing, this is what you get, a lot of information. So, so you have to approach the data set. You have to make sure that the data set is in the right format so it, it, it can be used for, for, for planning. And what we end with that is hydrographic data sets. It's, it's not a, a chart, it, it's, it's the charts divided in, in a lot of data sets. And then it's, it starts to, to um, be a little bit more complicated because we have right to, to produce a, a, a chart, but we don't have the legal rights to, to the different data sets. So if we want to, to exchange data sets and we want to do use data, we have to, 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 to make sure that, that uh, there's a governance model in place for, for, for the exchange of data. Um, so we have to make clear agreements uh, between the, the people who will um, use the data and the people who will provide us with the, with the data. When we want to, to exchange uh, data across borders, we also have to realize that from different countries, there could be a different approach to what is national security, who are allowed to see what kind of data. So we have to make sure that, that uh, we take care of, of the, the, the national security issue as well. And we have to um, be sure that, that we um, also realize that, that different countries have different uh, kind of organization and how they deal with data. And we have to make sure that we have an MSDI that will be able to cope with that. And then, of course, and it se seems to be very simple, and, and I think that is for everything, a clear definition about, for instance, what is a hydrographic data set, what is a data set, what is the content of that data set, and then there will be some key hydrographic data set. The coastline could be a, a key hydrographic data set. Just to, 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 to give you an example about data set is, is when we, for instance, in Denmark have made our surveys, the surveys is, is made for, for, for paper charts, but in the marine spatial planning, it, it, it's a lot more. Uh, so we have to, to make sure, are we storing the, the data correct? What are the, uh, the qu uh, quality of the data? What are the harmonization? And for that reason, the metadata is very important. And suddenly we have to take a lot more consideration about what are we going to do with the data when we collect it, because it could be used for something else. Just about metadata, what we are doing in Denmark is using what is already established and, and Inspire have established a, a national portal for metadata and that portal is established in, in every country. So we could just use that for MSDI and MSP for, for, for the same reason. Five minutes, two minutes? Oh. Just to show you what we are doing. Two minutes. Um, this is, is it, 
what it's about to, to MSGI is creating a common operational picture that could be used for MSP, but also for a lot of other things. So when we start to exchange data, we have to make sure that the, 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 the system or, or the organization we're establishing are not only focusing on, on MSP, but it's focusing on a lot of uh, possibilities. This is the last one. Um, so when we, we, we want to, to um, plan across borders, we have to be ready to, to, to take in consideration that we have to plan across sectoral interests. We have also to, to, to make sure that we are able to plan across land and sea. We have to not only to, to establish a, a MSP uh, data exchange, but, but entitle us to, to have a common operational picture. We have to make sure what we are doing also give uh, the access for citizens, firms, and, and other organizations than, for instance, the agencies. And of course, uh, to, to support the, the agencies in, in their um, way of, of uh, digitizing the way they are uh, the working. And, and I think the biggest challenge for, for instance, the Baltic is the governance. We have to agree on the data set that should be exchanged, what should the, the quality and the standards of these data sets be. We have to agree on the technical aspects that in, entitle us to exchange the data. Uh, we have to organize a kind of uh, uh, regional MSGI with the rules and agreements. Uh, we have to ensure what we are doing, for instance, in the Baltic is harmonized with what they are doing in, in the North Sea and other places. And we have to make sure that we have uh, the economy and a financial uh, model in place, and we have to make sure that we have the metadata in place as well. And then we can start to use uh, the things. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.